Welcome to our video on a data type problem for z-score and then we're going to deal with a linear regression model. These are based from the Praxis 2 or the 0061 exam. But again, you know, these are general topic questions and can help you out on any test. So in the first question, we're told that the lifetime of a certain type of disposable razor normally distributed. So we'll set up a normal curve, place our mean, and then do our best to estimate the curve, right? It's going to climb up to the mean, and then, well, I'll fix that. Climb up to the mean, and then peak down. And it should be symmetric. Ah, I don't have time drawing these right now. I'll try one more time. You know, I'm, I guess I'm being lazy here. I should just use a tool that makes this work, but I'm, I just want to sketch it out. Okay, that is a terrible normal curve, but it's the best one I've drawn so far. Anyway, what we know is that it's normally distributed with a mean of 16.8. So mu equals 16.8. And a standard deviation of 2.4 shavings. So let's set that up. 2.4 down 2.4. So how far is it going to go? Well, it's going to go up to 16.8 uh, plus 2, which is 18.8, plus 4.4 is 19.2. And that's that's one standard deviation, and it's going to go down 2.4. So it's going to go down to 15.8, 14.8, so 14.4. Okay. So what percentage of disposable razors of this type will last more than 19.2 shavings? So what about this area up here? Well, I just want to go over something really quick. Here I was able just to add, because it fit into say, well, if one standard deviation was 2.4, we're going up to 19.2. That happens to fall right at the standard deviation. But that's not always, not always going to happen. Sometimes you might get a, a value that's just above or below the standard deviation. And that's where z-scores, right, come into hand, come in, I guess, handy. A z-score is you take your observed value, right? So they're going to give you a value, maybe like 19.3 shavings, or 19.3 something, or 19.4, or 19.1. That's your observed value. And what you want to do is you take that and you subtract it from, from, from you. And you divide that by the standard deviation. Really what you're saying is, and, and we can look at that in terms of 19.2 for the simple case to understand. You're saying, well, what is 19.2 minus... 16.8, right? Your observed value is 19.2 minus 16.8. Well, what's that different? What is that? That's that's 2.4. Well, you divide that bit by the the amount that the amount the what? <laughs> sorry, you divide that by the standard deviation because what it's telling you is how many standard deviations is that, right? And that'll help you understand the location of what you're dealing with. And here it's just one, which and that makes sense because this distance here is one standard deviation away. And the z-score can help you because you're just finding out, well, relative to, to the amount of standard, what, the length of a standard deviation and the distance from the mean to wherever I am, how many standard deviations is that? And that will help you deal with lots of questions. So right now we have to deal with the question that says, what's this area up here? Okay, so I'll set that up. I'm trying my best to color in. Use a bigger pen stroke here. Oops. Do it. Okay. Now, what we have to remember about the normal curve is that 50% of it is from the mean this way, and 50% is the other way because it's symmetric. But also that, right, to one standard deviation, this total area is 68%. So each half right here is 34%. So if I want to know what is this blue area right here, I'm going to take the entire right side of the normal graph, which is 50%, because it's on the right-hand side of the mean, take away this chunk of 34% right here. And the piece that's left over is the shaded piece right here. So the answer is 16%. And also, we might get problems that are about, about linear regression. And, and the basic idea of linear regression is, right, just set this up, we're trying to model something here, and, and maybe you got a bunch of pink dots. And it is tempting, right, 
to to draw a straight line, and we can sometimes, but sometimes a straight line, right, what will end up happening is that the error between the line and these data points is going to be greatly varied and sometimes just unacceptable. So the the, the technique of using uh, the, uh, the least squares linear regression is to form, I think, some type of some type of curve, right, or something to minimize those distances from your estimation to those points. And anyway, and, and I mean at any rate, um, when you do this, you you still might have a good correlation, right? There might not be a line or the line that you draw, right? No matter how how you position it, um, the coefficient might be really low, which tells us that there's not going to be a really a really um, strong correlation. So zero is no correlation. All right, positive one means that we have a very strong positive right, correlation. Negative one, same thing, those are the extremes. That's also a strong relation. And um, it just, positive and negative correlations uh, have nothing to do with slope. So correlation, well, they could, but correlation in general does not right, directly relate to slope. It just has to do with the relation ship between our variables, right? How are they how are they correlating to each other or correlating to some factor that we're looking at? So anyway, if if we get a problem, and this is one of the problems I came across, and we're told that the the, the correlation excuse me, correlation coefficient equals coefficient equals negative point zero three what can you conclude about that, about the about the research, and um, what this what this coefficient means? Well, that means that the the linear the linear model is not a good fit, right? Because this negative point oh three is a very a very insignificant correlation. So the linear model, right? In this question, they're asking. Um, I think the way they said it was the researchers analyzing data from an, from an experiment using a simple linear regression model. Um, using the, the statistical features of a graphing calculator, the researcher entered the data into the calculator and ran a least squares linear regression. So, so when you get a correlation like this, the linear, the linear model is not a good fit. Right, you might need to curve it or, or change it somehow. So the linear model is not a good fit. And that would be the answer. Um, but let me talk about the other choices as well. They offer as a oops, that's not good. They offer as a choice that the dependent and independent variables have a strong negative correlation. That's not true. A strong negative correlation would be closer to negative one. It and then they say the slope of the linear model is negative point oh three. Well, it might be, but not necessarily. And the intercept of the linear model is about negative point oh three. No, that that doesn't matter. So if, if we're getting a correlation coefficient and we're using the least squares method, we're trying to make it work and it's really low, then maybe this model is not a good fit. Right? It's just not fitting the way the data is spread out. Okay, I hope that helped.